All right, why, why don't we go ahead and talk about the throttling devices right now? Um, in general, these are flow restriction devices, okay? And we, in the fluid mechanics class that you may uh, will, uh, take from me or somebody else, um, we will study these in more, more detail. But at this point, what I need to do is explain you how it goes from the conservation of mass and energy point of view for these uh, devices. The reason is, uh, in the most common, uh, one of the most common cycles that we will study is the refrigeration cycle and the refrigeration cycle has this right so that's why I'm interested in uh, covering this um, and typically the goal of a, a flow restriction device is actually not to stop the flow like a valve this is a valve right I can completely turn it off but that's not the goal the goal is to drop pressure and typically what happens is associated with it the temperature drops significantly over here as well okay well I talked about the refrigeration cycle right so I want to give some uh, names to it. So I have a condenser, actually, okay? And it exists, ex exists, and we have the refrigerant flowing. And I typically put capillary tubes over here, small tubes, and they are typically adiabatic as well, and it goes to the evaporator, okay? And the goal over here is twofold. One is to reduce the pressure from to here to here, as well as the temperature, so it goes to the evaporator um, as a saturated mixer, typically, okay? But let's look at the conservation of mass. And that will be fairly easy because look at the valve kind of deal. It has one inlet, one outlet. So it's fairly simple. And it's very similar to what the devices that we have covered so far. Okay, so that part is fine. Let's look at the conservation of energy. Q.net minus W.net will be equal to M dot because one inlet, I'm assuming steady because these are typically steady, steady devices. The exit squared by 2 plus GC exit. Oops minus h inlet plus v inlet squared by 2 gz inlet okay as i said typically these are adiabatic devices even if it's not just incorporate it into your analysis not a big deal it's simply a number that you put to this very equation that you're looking at okay but in a typical sense think about like the valve or you know capillary tubes and these are typically adiabatic the reason is they're too small you know like the surface area if it is huge yes yes then maybe but in a general sense, this is not going to happen, okay? And if you remember the turbines, the goal was to drop the pressure, but rather that was a secondary goal. The first goal was to extract energy. Unlike the turbine, this goes through the similar thing where I, where I drop the pressure, but I don't extract any energy. So basically, um, it's simply, from that angle, it, it acts like a nozzle or diffuser. So there's one in it, one outlet, there's no um, energy entering the system or leaving the system from that angle, okay? Um, okay, I don't think anybody will argue with me application space wise that um, I am gonna ignore the potential energies. Um, this may sound interesting that um, when I drop the pressure, typically the actually the velocity increases, so the kinetic energy of the second one is larger than the first one. So the first one you can ignore, no question whatsoever. Okay, the second one, most of the case, as you will do, you will see this H is so huge compared to the velocity that I don't even need to deal with it, okay? So that is an advantage that we have over here. Um, so, and I, I told you this, this for this to be one kilojoule per kilogram, I have to have 160 kilometer per hour or 45 meter per second uh, velocity. So we're not gonna, you know, that's not gonna put a dent in our analysis, okay? So I'm gonna ignore that as well. And you can see now the left hand side zero, Right hand side is m dot times h e minus a h i. Forget about the m dot, it cannot be zero. So this means that um, my h exit needs to be equal to h inlet. Okay, and it's not going to come to you as a surprise, but we call this sometimes, I didn't talk about this yet, isenthal pick process. Okay, I think you know what I'm talking about. Isothermal means the, the temperature is constant, isenthalpic means the enthalpy is constant. Okay. Um, one angle I just want to make sure we are all on the same page is although the H is a single letter on the alphabet but indeed it, it has two components one is the internal energy one is the flow energy so what I'm saying is the summation of those two are constant okay so and whenever I say for instance it drops the pressure that's fine but what about the drop in the temperature it may not be the case okay let me give you an example so you will see what I mean let's take ideal gases in module 4, we discussed this ideal gases, you remember Cp was a function of temperature only, and we derived that H is a function of temperature only. So, what does this mean in terms of the temperature change? 
for an isentalpic process for an ideal gas. It means that the temperature needs to stay constant too. Okay, because remember you can convert this as RT as well. So the U was a function of temperature only. So we can make that comment and you can see T is constant. So it's clearly uh, conflicted with what I said before. So you have to be careful about these engineering devices, okay? I think that's enough of the explanation. There's not a lot to talk about over here, but why don't I solve an example problem, okay? Um, but let me write the question myself. I don't want you to watch me write the couple of sentences, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So basically what I'm doing in this particular example is I'm picking up this uh, device. So I have a capillary tube over here, I have a condenser and evaporator. So I give you the information about like, uh, you know, inlet to the capillary tube, which is a throttling device, and exit from the capillary tube, which is a throttling device. So here's what it says. I have R134A. It's important to note these things, okay? Some refrigerators work R134A, but that's not the typical. Typically you find them in an air conditioning system in a car, okay? All right, so let's continue. Exists as the condenser of a refrigerator cycle, basically it's in the throttling valve, as state 1 is given to me. It is a saturated liquid at 900 kilopascal. Okay? And it says that it exits the throttling valve or enters the operator as, well, it doesn't say much, it just tells me that it enters at minus 10 degrees C, so I don't have enough to go by over here. And the questions are temperature drop in this process, throttling process, pressure drop, and the quality of mixture entering the evaporator, basically that's the exit of the uh, trotting uh, valve, okay? All right, so let's get to business and do this. Okay, so I can go look at the table A12, uh, this lists the, obviously R134A as a function of pressure, okay? So I look at a particular line that says 900 kilopascal, the saturated liquid, what does that mean? So I have to look at HF value, and that turns out to be 101.62 kilojoule per kilogram. And at the same line, you will see your saturation temperature corresponding to this particular 900 saturating saturation pressure is 35.51 degrees C. So now we can see I can answer question part number A, okay, temperature drop. So my delta T would be 35.51 is entering and the exit is minus 10 degrees C. So it comes for 45.51 degree C. Okay. All right. So far, um, I, you know, what about the pressure drop? Can I find it? Well, no. The pressure is not given in the second uh, state. So now I'll go back and look at the, this particular line. It says T is equal to minus 10. So what will be the uh, the enthalpy of the second step? As I didn't give you any uh, heat transfer, so that's adiabatic. And as you've seen multiple, you know, in the previous, earlier in the segment, that my uh, H will be constant, so that my H2 will be H1, which is 101.62 kilojoule per kilogram, okay? All right, so now what I will do is my typical process of going to the saturated mixture region and looking at my, basically this time around, I'm going to look at table A11, because now I know temperature, but I don't know the pressure. And I look at my HF value which is 38.53 kilojoule per kilogram. HG value, which is 244.55 kilojoule per kilogram. And my HFG value, which I will need, uh, you know, present you don't need it at this point, but it will be important in a minute. The reason is looking at this H2 value, which is right between this and this. So I'm in a saturated uh, mixture region, okay? But also from table A11, I'm going to go read the pressure as well. And that will be 200.74 kilopascals. So I think now with the pressure known, I'm ready to attempt to solve part B. And this will be delta P will be, the first was 900 kilopascals. The exit is 200.74 kilopascals. So that will be right around 700 kilopascal pressure drop in this throttling process. 699.26, uh, right? Right around 700 is what I have. Okay, then I do the part C2, you know, finding my X value. So my H2 will be HF plus X A HFG. You see, that's why I need HFG. If you didn't write it, uh, you know, when you're looking at A11, A11, you have to revisit it, but that's not a big deal, okay? So from here, you can see 101.62 kilojoule per kilogram will be equal to HF, which is 38.53 plus 
x times 206.02 and I get my x to be 0 0.306 for this particular case. Okay. All right. So that's going to do it for the throttling uh, process. Uh, have a good day. Thanks.